going to do exercise 6.6. .6. This is a long one. It gives us a chance to see the entire production report, by the way. Exercise 6.6 .6 will bring us through learning objective 2 and learning objective number 3. So let's see what we have here. Equivalent units and cost for equivalent units. So we know that that's part 1 and part 2 of the production report, but we're going to go ahead and do part three of it anyways to see what it looks like, all right? We're going to make it longer than we have to. <clears throat> Health Check manufactures an antacid product that passes through two departments. Data for June for the first department is as follows. Now, it's important to look at this. We have work in process for June, for June 1st. We have the amounts that are started in production the uh, leaders transferred out, and an ending balance for work in process. We have everything for the quantity schedule. For the equivalent units, we see that we have three cost categories, material, labor, and overhead. So we know how to lay out our production uh, report. So we're going to do the first, uh, the first two steps of the production report. So let's make a note of that. This is the production report. And the first part of the production report is the uh, quantity schedule and equivalent units. I'm just going to shorten it to EU. Uh, you know what it means, equivalent units. And we know how we start these all the time. The quantity schedule has two uh, uh, sort of categories. The first one is units to be accounted for. The second one is units accounted for as follows. So let's start with the first one, units to be accounted for, and we're just going to worry about the quantity schedule here. Okay, units to be accounted for, and we have our work in process, our beginning count, because we're dealing with units in this particular case. And what beginning count are we told? June 1st, 80,000. So we're told that we have 80,000 and we're dealing with liters, but we'll call them units anyways. Then it's units started units started in production and we are told from the data that we're given that we started 760,000 units in production. So we have total units of 840,000. We have to account for these. So total units. Let's continue on here. Units to be uh, accounted for are done. So we go on to units accounted for as follows. So where did these 840,000 units go? Well, units transferred out will take care of some of it. Units transferred, these were completed and transferred. So units transferred, we're told, was 790,000. Now, since the units accounted for must balance with the units to be accounted for, if this is 790, we should expect our working process ending count to be 50. And we are told that it is 50. So our work in process ending count is 50,000. And there's our 840,000. This is sort of a trivial thing, but this, this column right here is what we call the quantity schedule. The quantity schedule, which is part one. Uh, of, of this uh, uh, of our production report, the quantity schedule. Now we're going to do the equivalent units. And the equivalent units really are, are just concerned with the units to be accounted for, or sorry, the units accounted for as follows. So what we want over here is we want our equivalent units per cost category. And we were given three cost categories. We were given materials, we were given labor, and we were given overhead. So, of the 790,000 units that were transferred out, in terms of materials, how much of these 790,000 units were done? Well, if they were transferred out, all of them were done. So, in terms of equivalent units in materials, we have 790,000. In fact, it is 100% done across the board. That's the whole idea behind equivalent uh, units is how many units were actually done. Here are 790,000, so we just put 790 right across. Now we have our work in process ending count. And we are told 
as far as uh, uh, this data is concerned, the beginning work in process inventory, we're given some numbers for, and here we are. The ending work in process inventory was 60% complete with respect to materials. So for materials, if the ending count, we have 50,000 partially completed units, if they're 60% complete with respect to materials, then with respect to materials, we have an equivalent unit of 30,000. 50,000 partially completed units, 60% done with respect to materials makes 30,000 equivalent units, just in terms of material. That's what that means, just in terms of material. Now with respect to the other two costs, they were 20% complete uh, for labor and for overhead. So if they were 20% complete, 50,000 partially completed units with 20% of the labor cost already incurred would be the same as 10,000 complete units. And same with overhead, 10,000 complete units. So we have 800,000 equivalent units in terms of overhead costs incurred, 800,000 equivalent units in terms of labor costs incurred, and 820,000 equivalent units in terms of materials incurred. That's the end of part one. When we do a production report, there are three parts. Part one is the quantity schedule and equivalent units. Here we're only concerned with units. Part two is the cost per equivalent unit. So we'll write that down here, cost per equivalent unit. And in cost per equivalent unit, if we look at the first part here, look at what we did. Units to be accounted for, and units accounted for as follows. When we get to cost per equivalent unit, it's costs to be accounted for. So we write costs to be accounted for. And we'll have some total costs, much as we had the quantity schedule, we have our total costs. And then we'll have our per, our equivalent unit costs as well. So the first thing we want to do is, if we have to account for things, look at what we had to account for these units. The first item of units we had to account for was the beginning count. So the cost to be accounted for is the same thing. Our work in process beginning balance. Here it's our work in process beginning count. The first thing we do here is our work in process beginning balance. And we're told that our beginning balance of work in process, we're not given a total, but we're given the amount for overhead, for labor, and for materials. So we're told that we have 48,000 in overhead in work in process. We have $30,000. We'll put a dollar sign on the top of the column to signify that we're now dealing with dollars and not units. <clears throat> and for materials, we have 68,600. If we add these three across, we're going to get $146,600. So that's the value of our work in process beginning balance. If we look up here for our quantity schedule, we see that after we have our beginning count, we have our units that were started. So down here for costs to be accounted for, we have our work in process beginning balance, and we have our costs added. So if you can do this first part, the second part is the same as the first part, but everything is in dollars instead of counts. So our costs that were added, we are given uh, costs for overhead, labor, and materials, but not a total. So we have to figure that out on our own. So we put 529,000 here because that's what we're told. We're told $370,000 in labor, and we're told $907,200 in materials. If we add these three across, we get $1,869,000. It gives us total cost of two million fifteen thousand eight hundred. There's our total costs, and we can sum each of these to get a total overhead cost, total labor cost, total material cost. We end up with six hundred and forty thousand dollars here. We end up with four hundred thousand dollars here, and we have nine hundred and seventy-five thousand eight hundred dollars here. Now. If you add these three numbers together, it equals this. So this total equals this, plus this, plus this. Now you may say, well, of course it does. But this becomes important when we do our equivalent units, which is what we're going to do right now. So now that we have this, recall that we've already figured out what our equivalent units are. 
Remember, this section is cost per equivalent unit. Here's cost. Here's equivalent units. So our equivalent units were 800,000 here. They were 800,000 here and 820,000 here. So our cost per equivalent unit is simply 975,000, our cost. Let's make sure that uh, we understand that we're dealing with dollar signs here and we're dealing with quantities here. So our cost per equivalent unit is $975,800 divided by the units. Here's our cost, here's our equivalent units. So cost per equivalent unit is simply just a division. So it will equal $1.19, let's get that, uh, let's do that a little bit better there. $1.19 here, if we do the division here, we'll get 50 cents here, and if we do the division here, we will get 80 cents there, equals $2.49. This column, by the way, we call whole cost. That is part two. Our quantity schedule gives us our equivalent units. Our cost per equivalent unit does just that. It adds up our total cost. We start with costs to be accounted for, because we got to account for those costs. If these are our equivalent units, this is our cost per equivalent unit. In other words, what this is saying is that each equivalent unit has $1.19 of materials in it, has 50 cents of labor in it, and has 80 cents of overhead in it, so that our cost per whole unit is $2.49. So we can see very quickly here that if we have 790,000 complete units, we know that our total cost will be $2.49 times the 790. And if we have 50,000 partially completed units, we know what our equivalent units are in terms of material, labor, and overhead. So if we have 30,000 equivalent units of material, and it's $1.19 per equivalent unit material, we can see how easy it would be to figure out our ending work and process ending inventory. The question ends here. We're done the question, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the third part. Here we did costs to be accounted for. What I'm going to do in the third part is what's called the cost reconciliation. The second part of the quantity schedule is units accounted for as follows. The last part here will be costs to be costs accounted for as follows. So let's get to that now. Okay, so I've kept the lower part of the production schedule of the last screen that we've done, and we're going to do the last, uh, the last uh, section. And the last section is called the cost reconciliation. Cost reconciliation. And while this was costs to be accounted for, this is costs accounted for. As follows. So now we're going to account for our costs. Well, what's the first thing we, uh, we, we can account for? Well, we account for the units that are transferred because they were 100% complete, right? So units transferred. And how many units, how many equivalent units were transferred in terms of material? Well, all of them, 790,000. How many units were transferred in terms of labor? all of them. When a unit is transferred, it means it's 100% complete with respect to every single cost that we track. So we can multiply 790,000 by $1.19 and add that to 790,000 times 50 cents and then add that to 790,000 times 80 cents or we could just use whole cost. So 790,000 times $2.49, $2.49 gives us a total cost of 1,967,100. So if we were doing the journal entry to record the units leaving this department and entering the next department, we now have our total cost. That's why we do the production report is to get this number to complete our journal entry for what gets transferred out of this work in process account into the next department's work in process account. But we need a work in process ending balance for this account. Remember, we have an ending count but not an ending balance. That's why we call this cost reconciliation, right? So we have our work in process, ending balance. 
And we can do it all on one line, put the equivalent units and multiply them by this and get one number, or we can show our work. So we have materials, remember we have materials at $1.19, we have direct labor at 50 cents, and we have overhead at 80 cents. And here we list our equivalent units. Well, you'll recall that our equivalent units in terms of, um, in terms of material, this was way at the top we've, uh, on, on the previous screen, but we calculated it at 30,000. We calculated equivalent units in terms of labor being done at 10,000, and we calculated equivalent units in terms of overhead being done at 10,000. So what's left is 30,000 times $1.19. That will give us 35,000. 900. Then we have 10,000 times 50 cents, which will give us 5,000, and 10,000 times 80 cents, which will give us 8,000. And I've gone ahead and made a mistake uh, here. This should be uh, um, this should be 700, not 900. 700. Change that to 700, please. And once we total this up, we'll get 2,015,800. We know we've done it right if this number and this number are equal. So our ending work in process inventory account is right here. If we sum these, uh, these, these three numbers, we will get 48,700. That's our work in process ending balance. That is a full production schedule, all three parts.